Welcome everybody. We're going to talk today about what is a fraction. I'm Kathleen Cotter Lawler. I'm going to be your host here today. Historically, fractions make us a little bit crazy. Here we've got Linus talking to his sister. It says we have two, it says now we cut an apple in half. We have two halves now, don't we? And she says, that's fractions. You're trying to teach me fractions. You know I'll never understand fractions. What are you trying to do to me? I'll go crazy. That's how a lot of people feel about fractions. Well, so let's start by looking at how fractions are usually taught. This is actually a model that we found from a textbook. We call it the fish tank model. And what the, what the textbook does is has the children, it asks the question, what fractions of the fish are blue? So they're supposed to count the blue fish, and then they're supposed to count all the fish. And somehow from this, the children are supposed to understand that two-fifths is a number, when in fact, all they've done is count fish. Here's another one that we found in a textbook. We call this the words model. It says, this is fourths, this is thirds. Now, if this is chocolate, do you want a fourth or a third? I'm kind of thinking I'm going with a fourth. It doesn't make sense. One of the problems with circles that we're, most of us are familiar with is trying to compare four-fifths and five-sixths using this model. It's very difficult to tell. And the question is, too, are we comparing angles, arcs, or area? Again, it's hard to tell. Experts in visual literacy say that by comparing quantities and pie charts, it's difficult because most people think in a line. It's easier to compare along a straight line than it is to compare pie slices. And another group of specialists also suggests refraining from using more than one pie chart for comparison. So how should we teach fractions? We recommend using a linear chart. Now look at this chart. Look at the patterns in here. Notice how we've got this arch that comes up here and back down again. We've got another one right in here. We've got all these arches. Notice how we have number, line, number, line, number, line, number, line, number, line. And it keeps going. We've got all these beautiful patterns in there. Now there's some people that say, okay, fine, we're going to use a linear, but let's color it because, you know, the kids like color. Notice those patterns? Well, actually, it's a lot more difficult to do it. When everything is all um, drawn in lines, it's hard to see those patterns that were in there because the, the colors keep interrupting us. So we don't want it colored. Some people go, all right, fine, we won't color it, but let's get rid of those sevens and ninths because, ew, whoever uses those? And let's toss in the twelves while we're at it. Well, remember those patterns that were down there? They've now been interrupted. Remember when we had line number, line number? Oh, apparently there's no odd fractions. You want to give the child the whole picture, the complete picture. Ask the child to put it together like a puzzle so we can take the pieces and put it together. I had a little boy at a conference one time. He was about two and a half, and he put together this whole puzzle. And then when he was done, he dumped it all out and did it again, but he put the one at the bottom, half, third, fourth, fifth, and built his way up. Obviously a bright little guy, but children love doing it. Here's an interesting pattern. Here I have one half, two thirds, three fourths, four fifths, five sixths, six sevenths. I can just take the pieces one at a time and build a staircase. Now, this curve is a hyperbola. And some of you are going, I kind of remember that word from somewhere. I can do the same thing. I can center it. And now I have two hyperbolas. So what is a fraction? What's the definition of a fraction? Most people would say a fraction is part of a set or part of a whole. So how many of you are nodding your heads going, uh-huh, uh-huh? What about three halves? 
That's not part of a set. That's a whole and then some more. It doesn't make sense. The American Heritage Dictionary says it's the expression that indicates a quotient of two quantities. And some state standards say it's a number in the form of A over B where B does not equal zero. Now, both of these are accurate. Not very helpful, but they are accurate. So let's look at what it means. Let's, let's start naming fractions and see how this works. Well, first of all, until we start dealing with fractions, one was considered the smallest unit. And a fraction, the word means to fracture, to break, to divide. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one, we're going to fracture one, but we're going to out, we're going to do it in equal pieces. So we're going to take one and we're going to divide it into, in this case, three equal parts. So we have one divided by three. That's that quotient part of the dictionary definition. It's one divided into three equal parts. Of course, we read it as one third. Now, in English, we use the ordinal numbers to name the fractions, with the exception of one half. When we come to the fourths, because we do one half, we do one third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, one seventh. When we get to fourths, a lot of times people will use quarter. Of course, that's accurate, but math time, we want to use one fourth so that we've got that pattern. We have one third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, one seventh. Instead of saying one third, one quarter, one fifth, one sixth, using quarter interrupts the pattern of the numbers. So use one fourth during that math time. So, how should we practice what we've learned? So, we've had a little bit of exploration. We know kind of how the fractions work. We want to play games. Games are to math like books are to reading. The games provide the repetition that's needed for those automatic responses, and more importantly, it provides an application for the new information that the children have learned. So we're familiar with now how the numbers work, so let's play a game. We're gonna play Unit Fraction War, and our purpose is practice to practice naming and comparing unit fractions, and to help the children realize that a unit fraction decreases, so like one third, one fourth, one fifth, a unit, decreases as the denominator, the bottom number, increases. So our goal is to collect all or most of the cards by comparing the fractions, like a traditional war game. So here we've got two people, and of course we're gonna use our fraction chart. We lay out, I'm gonna lay out the one fourth, you lay out the one fifth. Whose is more? Well, if we're not sure, let's check. I have one fourth, you have one fifth. Oh, mine's bigger, so I get to take it. All right, we lay out another one. One eighth and one half. One eighth and one half. Who's is bigger? The one half. Now, sometimes you're going to get children to go, well, eight's bigger than two. But remember, we broke it into eight equal parts. Oh, that's right. That would be smaller. Okay, so you take this one. One six. Ooh, we have a war. So we lay down an extra card. And now who takes it? I do. Yay, me. And the game keeps going. All right, looking at our chart again. Now I'm going to start to explore and ask how many fourths are in a whole. And if I don't know, I can count it. One, two, three, four. Oh, four fourths. How many sixths are in a whole? Six sixths. It's surprising the number of people that don't know this. But if you don't know this, everything after this point is going to be complete chaos. So make sure your children know this. So, of course, we're going to play a game to help the children realize that five-fifths, eight-eighths, and so forth make a whole. And our goal is to find the pairs that make a whole. Now, this is a pre-selected group of cards. Of course, I'm going to use my chart because I want to use this tool so that I can increase that understanding, give the children something to work with, something tangible. 
So I turn over three fifths. Now, what you don't want to do is have a child just randomly turn over a card until you yell, oh, you got it. Well, they haven't learned anything. So what you want them to do is say three fifths. I'm going to look on my chart. Three fifths needs what to make one? I need two more fifths. So you want the child to announce how many fifths do you, what are you looking for? I'm looking for two fifths. Oh, and I found it. Yay me. I get another turn. Three eighths. I'm going to go to my chart. Three eighths needs what? Five eighths. I'm looking for a five eighths and oh shoot. Turn them over. Okay, your turn. So you find oh, a five eighths. Go to your chart. Five eighths. Needs what? Three more eighths. And if you were paying attention, you know where it is. There it is. So let's look at more fraction naming. Here I have two one thirds, which I can call two thirds. We read this again as two thirds. Now, remember back here when we had one divided by three? What happens if we take that same concept and we say that we have two divided by or divided into three equal parts? I have two divided by three. This would be the same thing as, look at that, same thing as two one-thirds. There's two different ways that you can look at fractions, in this case two-thirds. You can see it as two one-thirds, or you can see it as two divided by three equal parts. This fraction chart allows the children to explore the whole picture and the relationships within the whole using a linear perspective. The Right Start Math program that this is all based out of teaches fractions from levels A through E, but there's more focus in D and E. There's a little bit, of course, in A, B, and C, um, but there's more focus in D and E. The Right Start Math program has been given the Mary Pride Practical Homeschooling Reader Award in 2014, first place, and 2015, first place. We also have a book that is that takes some of the lessons, not all, but takes takes some of the lessons from the Right Start program and has some new work in here also called Right Start Fractions. And it is available in a kit where you've got the lessons, the worksheets, the fraction chart, and the pieces, as well as the cards to play the games. Math needs to be taught, so 95% is understood and only 5% memorized. And you can do this with the fraction chart and the way the Right Start Math program teaches fractions. Dr. Cotter says, our goal as a teacher of mathematics is to help our students transform, expand, and refine these beginning ideas into deeper mathematical thinking. If you have any questions or problems, give us a call or email us. Well, I thank everybody for their time. And I hope you all have a fantastic day.